Hello everybody and welcome back. This is going to be another edited Solaris campaign. Say hello to the Aldar Collectors. The Aldar Collectors here are driven assimilators. They like to collect species and populations and condense them within themselves. They are rapid replicators, so we can produce more of these guys pretty fast. Uh, they are of course a machine, the leaders are immortal, they have efficient processes, mass production, luxurious and bulky. In our cyborg species, we are playing with these guys, uh, the, what did I call them? The Aryan. Yeah, so you'll see they're called Aryan because we're the Aldar and we're our origin is an Alderson disc. So there's the Aldars and the Ursons. It's, it's very inventive. So these guys are cybernetic. Uh, they're strong, repugnant, non-adaptive, industrious, and conservationist. Um, we're going, as I mentioned, with the Alderson disc, which I'll show you in just a moment in game. But first, let's talk a little bit about our settings. So we're going to play on a large galaxy with lots of AI empires, maybe 15. Uh, we're going to have two four, uh, three fallen empires, sure. One Marauder Empire, just because that's how I tend to like to play. 0.5 and 0.5 on Habitable Worlds, so a total of one times Habitable Worlds. Uh, 7.5 Hyperlane, 2, 2, 0 0.75 on tech costs, not touching logistical growth ceiling, not touching this. Uh, Grand Admiral, no scaling. So the AI are going to be beefy right out of the gate. Uh, crisis strength, 1.25, but all crises are on, so they will fire sequentially. We'll get all of them. Caravaneers, Elgate is on. Let's roll. So while it's loading here, let me talk a bit about what the idea of this game is. Uh, this is a modded game, as you can probably tell because of the Alderson disc. Um, this game, we're going to try and assimilate the galaxy and fight a Turnum. If you're not familiar with a Turnum, they are a big ass thing added by um, uh, this Giga Structures. So we're going to play on Omega Eternum. This button doesn't seem to work. I don't know if it ever has, but the strongest version of Eternum that I can click on anyway. Uh, we got, they get 500% weapons damage, fire rate, shield HP, arm HP, hull HP, 80% ship speed, 500% army damage and health, 100 evasion, 200% mega stretch build speed. They're insane. They awaken much quicker. Delaying their awakening will be less effective. Their ships will have twice as many heavy ships. Um, they start with 3 billion fleet power. It's designed for use with extremely powerful mods. I don't have very many extremely powerful mods. The mods I'm using are Planetary Diversity, um, this one, Giga Structures. That's about it. The only other thing I've added is 20 building slots. And that will make us more powerful, especially because we have the Elderson disc um, to play around with. We're going to play on job-based um, mega structure build cap, meaning we can build a certain number of mega structures proportional to how many uh, uh, super tensile materials we can get our hands on. Uh, we are going to play that you can have as many mega structures as you like of any type except the interstellar assembly. Uh, yeah, virtual reality is allowed. And all of this is on. The only things I want to turn off are some of the annoying... Yeah, the event horizon offset facility. We're turning that uh, cool, so these are the settings we're going to play with, um, but there are some rules that I'll be playing with. So here we are on our Alderson disc, our drivel simulators. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, we're right next to the galactic core. That's not ideal, because that's where Eternum is. So basically, we're going to fight the crises, and then I think after the crises, probably, but it's not uh, determined... Uh, Eternum will wake up. They are right here in the center of the galaxy. They are stupendously powerful, even without all the settings that I just gave them. And I've just made them, like, just ridiculously powerful. So there's an unbelievable threat in the center of the galaxy. I expect to lose to it. What we're going to do is assimilate the entire galaxy and see if we can leverage the entire galaxy's might to take down Eternum. But that sounds a little bit like my last Stellaris campaign. So the restriction is now... We are very heavily restricted on which planets we're allowed to hold. I'm allowed to take planets short term while extracting their populations from them. Um, but we are only allowed to colonize the Alderson disk and unique planets added by planetary diversity. So there are nine unique planets. It's not necessarily the case that they will all spawn in this game. There are nine planets, which I will show you when we find them which increases our total planet count that we can ever, ever have to a grand total of 17. So it's not 17, 15, 15. Not very, no, sorry, nine planets. 
17 was right. Um, so it's not very many. Um, 17 planets, you know, it sounds like a lot. In my last game, uh, I can't remember exactly. I had enough to be able to spell out the whole Mechanicum saying. Uh, ever since I knew the... I'm not going to count through the whole thing. But, uh, yeah, we had a lot more planets. Like, like We had like 60 or something. Um, and we still... I mean, we won. We didn't win handily, though. Um, so, we'll see how it goes. I am playing as the cybernetics, partly... Um, cybernetic dudes, partly because I like uh, assimilating pops and then kind of microing, like, okay, this pop is going to be my science pop, and then building a bunch of science pops in, in science worlds and things like that. I like doing that. Um, I'm playing some Stellaris multiplayer off camera at the moment. There isn't time in those to do pop man uh, like microing like that, so I'm going to do it here. Oh god, we're losing unity. I suppose because the jobs haven't populated yet. But yeah, so the Alderson disc, this is our big advantage. Um, this is kind of bonkers, right? It's size 90. All of these are size 90. And unlike in my single, uh, my uh, multiplayer game, these two segments start off, like, you know, in working order, whereas these ones take repairing a massive, massive amount of stuff. And it, as you can see, it takes a stupidly long... Jesus Christ, I didn't realize how long it takes to do this. That must be... That must be controlled by your... Um, your production of, of super tensiles, right? It can't actually be 360,000 days. How long is that? I mean, it's a long, it's like thousand years, <laughs> right? Divided by 365. Yeah, it's a thousand years. Like, I hope that's not right. Uh, hopefully that's just because we need to produce a bunch of super tensiles. But anyway, we're gonna be able to grab these two pretty early, I think. Um, because I think, I think right away I could just be like, hey, go bomb them. I guess I'd have to invade them with like one army first. Um, but we're going to be we're going to attack uh, the pre-FTLs down here. They start at um machine age uh, and ignorant of us on the other side of the disc. Um but look at this. There's 24 people here, 24 people here. If we can add them to our starting population, we'll have a cracking start. I'm also looking forward to playing as a uh, uh a robot species because I haven't played with them since the new um update that'll be fun but anyway if you don't know how these work these edited series basically i'm going to unpause when something exciting happens tell you a bit about it and over the course of this one video you will see the rise and possibly the fall of the aldar collectors thanks for tuning in and i'll see you when the first interesting thing happens okay first mistake of the campaign i've just realized i reduced pop consumer good upkeep on an empire that doesn't use consumer goods <laughs> Do you still use them for science? No, you don't, right? That's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, so that, that was a cock up. Oh well, hopefully that will be the last and only mistake I make over this campaign. I hit stop recording rather than start pause recording. Sorry, hello. <laughs> so, uh, something did happen. I've added one more mod. We now have more ascension perks, which will make the game easier. Um, but, you know, I'm not concerned about making the game easier because I think we're going to lose. <laughs> Um, we found uh, an AI empire. They control these three systems, which is annoying because that's a choke point that I wanted to try and lock down. I tried, I rushed through these, but didn't quite make it, sadly. <clears throat> Apart from that, developing the capital. Nearly got nihilistic acquisition, which is what we're going to take first so that we can yoink all the pops off these two hyper segments and then colonize them for ourselves. Uh, but all in all, looking pretty good. Oh, is that another? That looks like an O-class star to me. Nice. O-class stars, if you're not familiar, are much bigger. They have um, significantly bigger... Uh, output from megastructures, but the megastructures to build take longer. And we're going to have to build a megastructure around like every star in this galaxy, I think, if we're to be able to take on uh, Eternum. But we'll see. We'll see. Okay, this might be the end of the campaign. <laughs> I have reloaded a save with the, after these guys declare war on us so many times, but I think I have a working strategy. They have now split their forces. They Previously, they piled in. The difficulty is that my supply line, like, look, if I want to go from one front line to the other, Right, you know, not through their space. I have to do that many steps. Right, by comparison, they just have to do this, which makes it really tough. So I'm really trying. I'm really trying. We're oh no, they're probably gonna smash me. Well, that's actually quite close. I'm cranking stuff out on this front line. Switch the good admiral over here. I don't know though. <laughs> we'll see. Wish me luck. Oh, look at that. This is just like two days later. They just were like, oh, they look a bit strong and then turned around and went back the other way. 
Oh, it's so close. Oh, we held for so long. It's been like five years of war. I was, I was doing so well. I was doing so well, but we tried so hard and got so far, but in the end it didn't matter. I'm gonna have to reload a much earlier save. I haven't been saving regularly. Oh, that really hurts. That really hurts. How could I have done it differently? If we had this choke point, it would have been easier because then they wouldn't have been able to disengage as easily when we fought them. Oh, but that's hard. Grand Admiral. It's, it's quite tough. It's quite tough. I'll reload and I'll see you in the next timeline. Oh, baby. <laughs> I think it's going to happen. I think we're going to win the first battle. I've, <laughs> I've restarted. So the campaign starts in uh, 2200, right? So 2200. I reloaded all the way back to 2210. And I have since run it five or six times. Oh, God. And now I have a critical shot. So we got gases. No, don't do that. Is that gonna hurt my? Okay, no, it's not. It's not. It's not a short-term problem. I need the gases, otherwise we're in big trouble. But I managed to isolate two of their fleets from the rest on this station and sent them packing. Okay, and we got some good defense platform action. I probably shouldn't put that there. Actually, I should put it here. Okay, an actual win. An actual win, and I think we're scaling faster than them. Which gives me hope. It gives me hope, but we'll see. This is an absolute... It's a really tough war. <laughs> okay, it's this time or nothing. We've got destroyers. They don't. I've driven them back on this front. They've driven me back on this front. They broke my big defensive station, which is a big problem, because I do not know how I'm going to retake it. But it's possible. We're very close to being able to force a status quo, which means if I can just grab systems I want, I only have to hold them for an instant. If there are 100 war exhaustion, I only have to hold them for an instant, and then I can force a status quo. That's what I'm banking on right now, but it's... Oh, it's looking tough. The war has raged all the way back to the capital. I still have hope. I still have hope, but it's looking pretty dicey. <laughs> I can't believe we're battling over the disc. Man, this war is... It's all messed up. 95% war exhaustion. They occupy the capital, but I'm pushing them back. And we kind of have them trapped behind this fort if I can push back and defend it. Because they're all the way down here with their main force. It, it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> it's, it's so close. It's so close. Okay, so we're holding our front where we wanted to hold it, almost. I mean, we lost... Well, okay, it's not true, actually. We lost... I mean, it's big. It's big. These are the big ally systems, big stars. But I think we're just going to hold this. Don't lose this system. Don't lose this. Come on. Oh, there's no leader. Where's my admiral? He must have died. Okay, new admiral. Okay, we got him here. We got him more or less where we want him over here. Are you going for me? No, so you're going down here. There's, <laughs> there's 200... Th this war has been going on for four real-life hours, for the record. <laughs> okay, we got him here. Now the question is, do I try and push into Sol, or do I reclaim all these systems we lost down here? Well, they only have these 400 things, so I can probably just split off, like, three destroyers? Yeah, let's try this. I'm going to send him south, try and reclaim, because if I can just rapidly regain all this stuff, then we're basically where we were at the start. And I'm sure, surely, well, I don't know, maybe not, but I would think my home economy is scaling faster than theirs can. They have more planets, obviously, so... <laughs> it's a nightmare war, man. Uh... <laughs> the worst possible... Oh, There's not the worst possible time. <sighs> I had them on the back foot. I had them outnumbered. They're okay, they're not technically. They're still superior, but I had them. We had them held here. I was able to push. I was reclaiming all these systems. So that's so annoying. They've stolen 12, 8, 14 alloys just straight out from under me and cut off all my expansion opportunities i guess i'm gonna have to do something dumb like grab just spend a lot of influence grabbing this place but that's oh, that's painful it was going well it was going well we had turned it around man that was a ridiculous war okay well the revenge the revenge will be real 
We've got equivalent tech. Hey, do you want to be my subject, you bastards? All right, so we'll see. We'll see if I can keep turning it around and uh, and get him next time. It was just, it's just so awkward when you have to go further than they do because of the uh, the way the hyperlanes fell. Oh man, that was really tough. All right, well. I mean, how strong are we compared to some of these guys? Maybe we're stronger than one of these guys and we can, you know, go after them. You want an embassy because you've got a bunch of rivals, so I will accept that. Oh, man, that was tough. Oh, I did get a uh, moral victory, though. We managed to yoink some of their pops. Just two of them. <laughs> but it's some lightning raids on, amusingly enough, Earth, <laughs> Soul 3, uh, the Tomb World, Rip, Future Humans. Uh, we did manage to yoink a couple of their pops, so that's fun. Oh god. <laughs> now these guys declared on me. Okay. Well, their capital just blew up. They're pacifists! <laughs> okay, well, it's not good. This will be the front line. Uh, they'll probably yoink all these stations on me. Systems, rather. Okay. Okay, we'll make it work. These guys outnumber me again now. Man, life's, life's tough as a driven assimilator. Okay. Okay. <laughs> There's a moment here. We have big defensive uh, positions. 12,000 over here, which is about the same as these guys observed fleet size. And they're at war. These guys are at war with these guys right now. Yes, these guys are at war with me. But that might mean now is the moment to jump on these guys. So, there's a lot of these guys, I know. But the... Uh, the Citizen Union is at war with the United Planets. Meanwhile, the Republicans are coming up from the south. But I think we can go after the citizens now. I think now is the time. Because, look, they've got 15,000 people here. How did they get there? Oh, do they have access around here, maybe? I thought they were going to be stuck. Damn. Okay, but if they go over here and they're busy and I can gobble up a bunch of their systems and then set up a defensive position. I'm bulking up this station right now. It's not that good right now, but 4,000 plus my fleet, plus a couple of upgrades. And we're so close to getting our second planet. It's worth remembering, you know, I feel like this is going quite badly, but we're playing on the hardest difficulty, and I have one planet. <laughs> so, you know, fair enough. Oh, of course, sorry, they have military access because of the, uh, the truce, that's why they could be there. Okay, big day. We managed to abduct the final members of this, which means now I can colonize the planet, get in there, get a second pop uh, center going, grow more people. That's a huge win. And we now obviously begin on the next one. Okay, I still think now's the moment to jump south. I'm very confused how these guys are occupying this, these guys, uh, I know, I'm saying these guys again. I'm very confused how the Republicans are occupying the citizens' things, because uh, they're not at war. Um, oh, no, they are. Okay. The Ecdusius Domin entity has somehow called in the citizen guys, even though they're not allied, so I don't quite understand how that's working. Interesting. Anyway, but yeah, it's. I'm debating whether or not we should jump on them, but the difficulty is, like, yeah, my planets are not doing. My planets, my planet is not doing so hot. But I feel like we can scale economically so quickly now. Is it worth risking it at war? But we'll see. Oh dear. Or rather, oh dear. This is an indictment of how our game is going so far. This AI up here is offering me a research agreement. We can learn 60 techs, and they can learn, like, eight. That's not good. We're a little behind. We're a little behind. But as we manage to bring on the other segments, we're going to be able to pick up, hopefully. Okay. I have found an in. We can make these guys our prospectorium. We have to give them 30% of their research production, which is obviously bad. Let's see how bad it is. Otherwise, it's all the standard, like, most pos lax possible... Uh, terms. Oh, we can grab we can grab one holding so we'll do that. But, we defense allied them and then okay, asset acquired, cool, but also non-standard space entity encountered. 
they are now our subject. So how much science is this going to cost us? Let's see at the end of the month. I think it's worth it regardless. Alert. We just need... Oh my god. <laughs> That's two... Three thirds. Okay, when can we negotiate the agreement again? 59 months. Yeah, I think it's worth it. In 59 months, I'll renegotiate. I'll make them a Scholorum instead. Um, in order to do that, we're going to need to... Uh, we're going to need to be able to make them like us a whole bunch. So we're going to be... Uh, we're going to be cranking on that. You can have a research agreement with your own subject. Interesting, let's do that. But them being our Prospectorum is good. They don't have to join our wars. <laughs> can you invite them to join your wars? I forget. No, you can't. Okay. Um, I still think this is worth it. We're going to get a lot of resources out of them. And just a short-term, big resource infusion, I think, will be what we need to tip us over the edge of being able to win a war against these guys. Once we've won it, we can negotiate. I think it's a good idea. It's a it's a horrendous research debuff. Do not get me wrong. But I think it's going to turn out worth it in the end. We'll see. Okay. New plan with the subject. We make them a bulwark. Same deals, but they do join us defensive wars now. Oh, that's true. Also, I have my have my super tensiles. Does that matter to you? Can I can I take this off now? No. They really want my they really want that. Okay. Does that mean I can have your super tensiles for no difference? Yes. That doesn't matter. Okay. Um the idea is we have to get we want to try and get to be able to integrate them. If I can integrate them, assimilate their pops, that'll be great. Right now, 30% of this. It's going to really hurt. It's worse than it looks because they're going to stop giving us what they were giving us. But this looks like it could work to me. We're going to have to buy some moats off the market. Which is not great. What about... I mean, that's not much research, is it? It'll, actually, it'll be better than that, though. God, you have to give them so much to make up for lost research. Okay, we're going to go with this. The idea is to, to keep trying to improve relations with them while this is the case. Um, they'll accept. They're now a bulwark. Oh yes, and while they're a bulwark... What's that giving me? And yeah, so there you go. <laughs> so, it's a problem. Don't get me wrong, it's a problem. So immediately we need to start buying... Oh, excuse me. Why doesn't that open the market tab? We need to start buying some moats. Oh, because I'm not producing moats, I can't buy them. That could be a problem. <laughs> this campaign's all falling apart, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm having to do weird things. Look at this. We have just done a whole bunch of trade deals, all of which were very favorable to my subject. I have capped out their, lo their happiness from favorable trade deal. They love us. They've got lots of trust. We've been improving relations. In fact, you can only improve relations with one to up to 150, I think. So you should go do that instead. And who else likes me? You. You should improve with you instead. Okay. Now, I believe we are able to get them to agree to integration. And what we have to do for that is give them the world. And when I say the world, I mean it. <laughs> we have to give them this that's a lot we have to give them a bunch of this stuff we have to give them a lot of resources we have to give them a lot of research but then they will agree to integration proceed so they agree to this new deal and then we immediately begin integrating oh excuse me the client the game's the game lied to me independent expansion and uh, all conflicts, none, integrated, dunk, dunk, dunk. I guess it changed just, uh, oh, it's zero. Okay, it shows that they'll accept on zero, but actually they won't. Let's give them more, oh, hang on. It cost me the influence anyway. <sighs> okay, pause, 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 pause. Here's the deal. I'll give you so much science. So much science, it might put me negative. And then I'll take this deal. Integration is permitted. You should agree this time. I had to wait because we had to regain all of the influence. By the way, I've accidentally been on isolation this whole time, which is real bad. But 
Okay, so there we go. Integration is now permitted. Integrate subjects. 53 months. Not very long. Not very long. Integrate the subject. This is my Hail Mary pass. Because they have, from Pops, 288 Diplo weight, right? We, we're doing so badly on the Diplo weight front, by the way. From Pops, we have 149. We're going to more than double our Pops. We're almost tripling. <laughs> I think there's a chance this could turn things around for us. So what I need to do now is get these planets ready to suddenly have a huge, huge influx of influx of pops. And uh, yeah, here's what that looks like. So we're we're cranking we're cranking stuff up to try and get uh, more uh, ready for all the new pops. We need a lot of spare drops. Okay, I just got a pop up. Here it is. War preparations, the Istrakan consciousness are declaring, getting ready to declare on us. Oh, fantastic. They are overwhelming technologically and superior. Brilliant. <laughs> um, we're just not paying them the research because we can't afford to. I'll take it. At war, on the other hand, could you just, could you just not instead? Could we not and pretend we had? Due to a lack of intel, it's unclear when it will happen. Oh, it's bad. Okay, they did declare war. Um, they have a 20,000 fleet power here. It's moving in. So I assume they have another one elsewhere. I can take 20,000. Get these defense platforms up. Fortify the border. I can take 20,000. Yeah, not sure why they let us do that. But that went extremely well. Good boy. And a level up for our leader. Nice. Uh, oh, Hulbert, I think. Okay, well, feels like we should press our advantage and seize this uh, star base of theirs. Let's try and get repaired up first, but promising start. Ah, uh, yeah, you know what's not promising? I was like, hmm, why hasn't the pop up gone away? Because these guys are going to declare on us as well. <laughs> Which is real bad. But uh, our borders with them are much more fortified at least. <sighs> Still not fortified enough. <laughs> this campaign, man. Absolutely doomed. These guys, though, almost half integrated. That's good. Okay, here's the real battle that will determine the, the tide of this war. They're coming in. 43,000. We have defending, including their not yet fully healed star base. Less than that. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't feel doesn't feel promising. <laughs> nope. 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 It's doomed. Oh, that might be run ending. That might be run ending because I think they can just steamroll to the capital now, and I don't know what I can do to stop them. Alert! Military oh, station is tragic. At least Priority nobody died. Malignant forces oh, are good. moving against us. <laughs> All of our guys are. <laughs> Missing in action. Um, I don't... Hey, defense platform hot points. Yeah, that sounds good. Oh, no, I should have got the strike craft. Oh, they're backing off, though. They might give me a chance to recoup, but these guys are coming in with 80,000. Yeah, my uh, my thing is Alert. not strong Hostile enough for fleet that. Assets detected. Yeah. Alert. Yeah. Spaceport engaged. That's a shame. I don't see how we survive now. Alert. Spaceport. We've got like 190,000 fleet power coming against us. Alert. Non standard space entity encountered. Alert. How could I have military station played this campaign better? I guess Alert. I should have focused Spaceport research engaged. more. Alert. Sorry. Spaceport deconstructed. Sorry, the advisor is very loud there. It's my bad. I guess I could have. I'm just going to try and fall back to the capital, but. I don't think it's going to work. Um, a lot of a lot of alerts, huh? A lot of alerts. Um, I don't really know what I could have done that differently. Like I feel like I don't know. I feel like I played fairly well, as well as I ever do. But. Uh, I need to get better at designing um, ships, I think. It's probably oops, it's probably part of it. Because I am very bad at designing ships in Solaris. 
construction. Ah, oh, but it was fun. There's a there's there's a way to do it. These guys are they going to get integrated in before the game ends? It's going to be close. I want to see the integration happen because I just think that would be so funny. Well, how about? I mean, they're going to fight me to my to my end, unfortunately, because they they know they're stronger. They simply know they're stronger. So they will, uh, they'll pummel me to my last. At least we're not wildly over the naval capacity anymore. <laughs> oh dear. Sure, upgrade your ships. Try and keep trying to reinforce. Here they come. Oh, okay. I can beat them. Probably. Oh, but not them. Damn. And I don't have uh, very many defensive platforms in my in my capital, sadly. So. A caravan, sure, a caravan cruiser can can fight <laughs> here. Hold them off. <laughs> oh, and here's the, the Rubicon, by the way. Evasive maneuvers. Yeah, and now the capital's being bombed, and there's no real way out of it. I guess what I need to do is play... What I need to do is not play driven simulators. Because people are so mad at driven simulators. <laughs> Everybody, I mean, that's why I couldn't do any kind of negotiation, any kind of diplomacy. Okay, we integrated uh, them. So, there we go. Pops doubling. Um, and what I would have done now, of course, is gone ahead and, uh, you know, resettled them all in at, at great expense. But, uh, sadly, we will never be able to make, take advantage of that anymore. Damn! Damn. This is the first Stellaris campaign I've lost in a long time. But uh, I am going to upload this regardless. I hope you guys will enjoy it. Um, let's design the next species together. Because I think that will be a good way to dull the pain. Um, sorry, it's so dark in here, by the way. That's so my dog can sleep. <laughs> uh, you were the precursor. So I think machines... They were quite fun. I quite liked being machines. But... Do I want to do them again? It's a shame I can't do... There's no way to get overtuned except as an origin. What if we were a hive mind? That looks like a good hive mind pop. And the names... We'll worry about the names later. The origin is going to be the same. I thought that was a cool origin. Maybe there's a way that I can get these two faster. Because it did take us a long time with the um, the stealing the pops method. Because if I went hive mind, there's only devouring swarm, right? Yeah, there's no hive mind who's just like their main thing is unifying pops into the hive mind. Like integrating, uh, integrating people. Because you can... Um, you can auto, um, integrate people into a hive mind. Sorry, it's quite late. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing it a little bit. Um, yeah. Maybe a hive mind. The thing is about hive minds. Capital system of flex plus 10% resources from jobs. Never mind, we're going to be imperial. <laughs> Okay, so what we should be is we don't want to enslave other species. Well, so we can still do cybernetics. The difficulty, maybe we should do robots. Robotic ascension from a normal ethics per perspective because then we can assimilate pops into our thing, but we can but it's not considered genocidal. So we can remain somewhat diplomatic. So we'd be like and we need to be friendlier with people. I think that's a key thing I've learned. So we'd be like materialists. Like xenophilic even to get them in, but maybe not. Maybe just xenophilic, maybe just um, egalitarian, maybe even pacifist. Do we need wars really? Even if we have unrestri uh, can't use unrestricted wars, we can still 
subjugate and then integrate, I believe. And the Empire size from Pops would be nice. But is that worth it? Five stability? I mean, that's like, what is that? It's like 2% good job output. I think we should be Xenophiles. Try and make people friendly with us. And then, because we only have one... So the idea is we're going to ascend into robots. Because who wants to stay looking like this? Oh, wait, we can't be Imperial if we're um, egalitarian. Okay, so we're authoritarian and Imperial. Yeah, of course. Um, and then we want to... I like... Where is it? What gives you meritocracy? Democratic or oligarchic. Okay, so we're not going to be able to... Is that preferable? No, I think Imperial is really good with the new trait system. And if we're going robots, then a robot Imperial thing will be good because our leaders will be immortal. Um, I realize this is kind of the last big solo Stellaris campaign I did. I'm kind of just setting up to do that again. Yeah, I'd rather not. What about being like a megacorp? Who cares about empire size from planets? Maybe a Megacorp would be fun. I haven't done Megacorp for a long time. Megacorp can still become robots. I'm assuming. Can't see any reason why they wouldn't. So then maybe... I do like brand loyalty early. Get, and get that unity going as fast as possible. Um, franchising will be useful if we go... Uh, yeah. I don't know, I don't really like... I don't really like Megacorps. Mm. Um, what kind of Imperial could we be? So, I mean, we'd go Imperial Cybernetic, and the problem would be we would never... There, there would be, like... um. By the end game, there would be a lot of species in our empire, which causes lag. But that, that's not the worst. Yeah, I think this could work. So we'll go, we'll still go cybernetic to honor our previous campaign. And then, uh, ruler pop resource output. That's pretty good. Hmm. Uh, but the ones I tend to like here are Master Crafters and Philosopher King. I like the Council Experience gain. And the Lord Chancellor is pretty good, so that's probably what we'll start with. An Enlightened Monarchy. Isn't Team York, is also good. <sighs> Excuse me. Ruler Pop resource output is pretty darn nice, though. Council Experience or... The governor experience is also good. I mean, we're going to have a lot of ruler pops, aren't we? Maybe we should play a hive mind. What's the downside of being a hive mind? I don't get the imperial 10% output. But 25% pop growth is pretty freaking nice. Yeah, go on. We, we, did, this, we did this last time, basically, um, in terms of going towards robots. Let's be... Let's be a hive mind, and we're going to go biological ascension, and we're going to integrate people into our hive. Can you integrate them into your species, or just m make them hive-minded? Hang on. Okay, so I went looking. I found a mod called Total Assimilation. Um, so we are still going to go cybernetic, is the plan. Um, and we will, yeah, as I discussed before, it's a, it's a nice xenophilic um, cybernetic intention. We're going to go um, Imperial, and we have Total Assimilation, which means I can assimilate Pops into my species, um, which is good. So we can still cut down on the number of species in the galaxy. That's the plan. We will be the Euthonian Star Dynasty. That's a great name. Sure, we'll go with that. And the name of our species will be Euthonian. Yeah, it's perfect. Ruler, I don't care about. Flag, that already looks kind of good, but I always make my flags round. Uh, we're going to origin on Alderson Disc. This will be 
the next one. Homeworld. This is, this is Prime Segment. Which is probably spelled wrong. And this is... The star is called Bob. Because in Alderson, one of the theories about how you would make an Alderson disc work is the star would bob up and down. Um, thereby creating day-night cycles. <laughs> which is hilarious. But the Alderson star dynasty. Uh, ruler traits. Uh, I like the eye for talent one, honestly. Early leader experience gain. Oops. Save it. Cool. So this will be the next campaign, but until then, thanks for watching. Oh, I thought I tried so hard and came so far. That So just for your context, that's that series you just watched was recorded off over the last seven real life hours. So to give you an idea of, of how compressed it is. Um, but yeah, the Euthonian cyborgs will welcome the world to the Allison disc and then they will assimilate them completely. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks for watching, everybody.